wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. And I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. Oh, he picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Come on. I cannot deny what I see, got no choice but to believe my doubts are burdened. Like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burdened in bitterness, you can just keep it moving. No, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. Oh, he picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he knew my heart, he changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Hey, lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hey, lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am hello.
Kyrie Design family. My name is Hannah, and I'm so blessed and so privileged to be able to honor our online members today. Thank you guys for joining us today. Um, as you may see, I'm like looking on the live stream. As you may see, um, I have this like poem in my hand because it's Palm Sunday. Um, now, I tried to be like, I, I don't know, I tried to wear green, but it's not the right shade. Um, but you know, it's okay. The, the spirit is here. The spirit is here. Um, but I'm super excited for Palm Sunday. Um, it, the city is all, it's vibrant. I feel like I always say that, so maybe it's always vibrant. But the city is vibrant this morning. Um, I'm seeing so much of the joy of the Lord. Everybody's excited for Palm Sunday leading up to Easter Sun Resurrection Sunday. Um, I'm just super excited for what God's doing in the city. Um, and like, to, I'm like, keep looking over there. But towards um, the front, like, entrance door, they have a bunch of, like, palms, and they're just handing them out to people, like, little strips of palm. Oh, you can't even hear me. Little strips of palm. Um, so it's just really cool that you can just take, um, you can take it home. I don't really know the uh, watering requirements. I don't even know if it needs to be watered, but that's a very fun thing. Um, but we're very excited, aside from fun, I'm very excited for Palm Sunday. I see some other people kind of had some twin telepathic moments with me, and they also wore green, which is a really cool. I don't know why, but when I come into, like, the church and I see a lot of people wearing the same color, I'm like, we're all in one accord, guys. That's so cool. Um, but I'm very excited for um, this Palm Sunday. And what God's going to do, um, super duper excited. Let me go on the YouTube. I was already on YouTube, and I don't know why I left. Um, seven views on YouTube. I feel like each week we climb just a little more, guys. Um, well, our views always, they usually go up during the live stream on YouTube. But I'm saying to start off with seven is really good. Um, that means you guys are tuning in with me. Um, let's see who's in the chat. If you haven't commented something, just wave at your neighbor and put a heart emoji. Um, comment something in there. Let me know you're doing good, that you're excited for this Palm. Let me know if you're excited for this um, Sunday as well. You know, Sister Betty and Corey, she says, praise the Lord, city of God, peace and blessings. Peace and blessings to you as well. Uh, we have Sister Diane Shelton. Good morning to you. Um, let me go on the Facebook side, see what's popping over there. Um, let me see, let me see. 10 views. Okay, so that's 17 in total. I'm pretty sure one of them is me from each side. So really that's 15 views, but you know it's okay. It's okay. Or 16, really, technically. Um, yeah, anyways. Um, sister, we have Sister Deborah Hawkins. She says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord to you as well. Let me comment something. I feel like I always, I should just like have pre-made messages to copy and paste because I can never type and speak at the same time. It's actually a struggle. Um, definitely praying for that healing. <laughs> the multitasker, multitasker mindset. Um, we have Sister Rita Rainwright. She says, good morning to all. Good morning to you. Um, Sister Prestina Perry. She says, praise Jesus. Yes. That's the type of energy that I'm talking about. Praise Jesus. Um, Sister Kendra. She says, good morning, city of God, highway to Zion. Um, Sister Ann Jeanette. I pray that I pronounced that correctly. That's a very beautiful name. Um, you guys all have beautiful names. Now I feel bad. Like, when I compliment one person, I'm like, okay, let me do everybody else. But you all do truly have beautiful names. Um, she says, good morning, Zion. Good morning to you as well. I'm super excited. Um, I'm really excited for, let's talk about, res let's talk about it. Let's talk about Resurrection Sunday. Because I am super duper excited. And I don't want to be that girl. But sometimes we just say, oh, Easter Sunday. And we forget Jesus is the reason for the season, guys. It's not because of the Easter bunny that we're here today. It's because of his sacrifice, okay? Because it should have been me. And it should have been you nailed on that cross. But he got up. Um, anyways, um, I'm very excited. I love Resurrection Sunday. It's literally one of my favorites. Um, one day, I'm literally just going to pull Doc on this camera. Because I feel like I always seem crazy. He always every week consistently makes funny faces at me while I'm on camera and I look at it and I chuckle but you guys can't see him so I think I literally look crazy like what is she laughing at girl like anyways but one day I'm just gonna drag him out here <laughs> saying no I'm gonna be like doc come on with me um because I don't want to look crazy <laughs> um, he's definitely good at he's definitely there guys 
Um, but back to Resurrection Sunday, I'm super excited because Jesus is the reason for the season. Sometimes I say, I'm not saying saying Easter Sunday is wrong. It's just, I'm like, look, God did, not the bunny, even though bunnies are really cute. But God did, God did. And I'm super excited for Resurrection Sunday at the city because we're going to have a continental breakfast before service. I think that's at 9, I think it's from 9.30 to 10 o'clock from when church starts. Um, continental breakfast, then after service, we're going to have treats. That sounds so greedy of me. Y'all thought I was going to say, like, I'm excited for the spirit to move. And here I am talking about food. Like, but I'm also excited for the spirit to move. Because um, I just know, it's just something in my spirit. I just know that he's going to do something in Resurrection Sunday. Um, and this Sunday as well. Today is Baptism Sunday. Um, they have, like, these signs, all things new. They put a sign on the baptism pool. I'm super excited. Um, I just know he's working in these, um, um, in these Sundays. And I'm super, let me, okay, I'm, I don't want to say super excited about everything. But this upcoming week, um, as you guys know, before Resurrection Sunday, we have our week of consecration, which is this week where every day up until Friday, we fast from 12 midnight until 4 p.m. Um, am I excited for the fasting? Not necessarily, but I'm excited for what God's going to do through the fasting, if that makes sense. Um, like, if you haven't noticed by the past year that I've been doing this pre chat, Hannah likes to eat. She likes food, guys. That is her weakness, but we must crucify our flesh carry our cross daily and we're gonna do this fast and if you guys want to add like a little something extra like other than fo like food and like maybe you're saying social media is kind of hindering your walk with God and you're like let me take this um fast from this on top of food if the spirit's leading you to do so you do that boy or girl boss you do that um but a few weeks ago Doc actually he challenged us I think he said to um fast from something like to deny ourselves of something whatever it's like, kind of just deny ourselves of something. And so this past Tuesday and in teen Bible study, some of the teens were sharing what they denied themselves of for the past few weeks. And so Resurrection Sunday is when we can actually go back to that thing. Um, but if that fast worked good enough, then maybe you might not want to go back to it. Um, one of the things I chose was social media. And part of me is kind of dreading going back because I feel like it's a, it's a love-hate relationship with it. Um, it's bittersweet. I think that's the best word or way that I could put it. Um, so taking a break from that to deny myself of it has been really nice and fruitful. So I've kind of, but I'm also like, okay, what have people been saying on there? Like, what's new? What's happening with people? Um, so I'm kind of excited and nervous to go back on there. We'll see if I do or don't. <laughs> um, but I'm excited, Baptism Sunday today, Resurrection Sunday, I'm excited to see everybody in their beautiful garments. Some people dress up, some people, well, they wear their best, people wear, they show up and show out. They wear the best that they can, and I love seeing the beautiful people of the city of God. Um, I'm super excited. I'm just super excited. Resurrection Sunday is literally one of my favorites, and it's going to be packed because we're joining service with another church. Um, so it's literally going to be packed out, and I'm sure people will bring guests mothers and family members to Sunday, so you don't want to miss it. You want to get here early for the breakfast, but not just for the breakfast, to get your seats. I'm logging off. You guys enjoy service. Bye. Hey, welcome to the City of God, Highway to Zion. We are so glad you've joined our online service. You could have chosen any other church, but you chose us and we are excited. We're a church that loves God, His people, and we love to have fun. Yep, it's as simple as that. Here at the City of God, we have three core values, discover, connect, and serve. And by that, I mean it's our focus to discover God in new ways, connect with his people by building great friendships, and serve in the community. Although we're located in Edgewood, Maryland, we're also wherever you are through the grace of technology. If you would like to discover more about God and our approach, shoot us an email at discover at ziontc.org. We would love for you to join our e-church. We're going live in just a moment, so get comfortable, grab a light snack, open your hearts, and let's dive in. We can't wait to meet you. Hey guys, I'm so glad that you've joined us today. You could have visited any live stream this morning, but you chose Zion. Well, that's not exactly Zion, but you get the idea. If this is your first time here, here's a few things you can expect. 
There's going to be crazy organic worship, a safe place to connect with God and genuine people. Here at Zion, we have three core values, discover, connect, and serve. Zion is a church of diversity. We're made up of all ages, walks of life, and different regions. However, we have one goal in common, and that's God. So open your hearts, free your mind, and make room for God. He's definitely going to show up today. If you would like to learn how to discover God and more about Zion, please follow us on all our digital media outlets and or visit our website at www.ziontc.org. You can also send us an email at discover at ziontc.org. We would love to hear from you. Well, thank you for listening in. We're going live soon. Grab your favorite drink or snack, get your Bibles, pour out your hearts, and let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the City of God Highway to Zion Palm Sunday service. We are so glad you have joined us today. I am Sonia, and I'm here to give you your weekly announcements. But before we give you the weekly announcements, let's wish a happy birthday to Tyrone Brooks, Micaiah Donaldson, Kizia Hall, Dominique Garrett, Javi Smith, and Jonathan James. And to anyone else celebrating their birthday this week, happy birthday. And to anyone celebrating an anniversary, happy anniversary. And here are your weekly announcements here at the City of God. Our spring consecration begins tomorrow, Monday, March 25th, till Friday, March 29th. Each day from 12 midnight to 4 p.m., we will be fasting. And we will also have services at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Stay tuned for more information concerning the services. Next Sunday, March 31st, is Resurrection Sunday. Yes, come celebrate with us on Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And communion will also be served on this day. And get here early on March 31st, next Sunday, for a continental breakfast and wonderful fellowship before service. April 3rd is our next corporate fast. Together we fast from 12 midnight to 4 p.m. It is so much to pray for. So join us as we together touch and agree in prayer and see God move. And on April 7th is the church anniversary. Come join us as we celebrate the rich history of Highway Holiness and Zion Temple Church. And now the city of God, Highway to Zion. So join us on April 7th for church anniversary. And those were your weekly announcements. Now, if you have any questions about anything you have heard, please email us at discover at cityofgodnow1.org. Again, that's discover at cityofgodnow1. And don't forget to join us next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday and communion will be served. Now, until then, you have a great day and a super week and stay tuned for our official welcome. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, 
and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The week of his crucifixion, Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem. The events that follow will literally change the world. He rides through the crowd, not on a white horse, but on a borrowed donkey. The people bow down, shout Hosanna, and wait for his next move. The crowds not only place palm branches at his feet, but they also place on his shoulders their own expectations of a conquering king who will overthrow Rome. Jesus will not only disappoint them, he will disrupt them and will shatter their assumptions about power and justice. You're invited into a moment of reset and discovery because the events around the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus are the absolute answer to every longing heart. May God give us eyes to see. City of God, Highway Design, and welcome to our baptism slash Palm Sunday celebration. Are you guys ready for service? Now, wherever you're listening from, whether it's your house, your job, your car, just tune in and hear the word of God. Uh, tag your family and friends down below and invite them into the service today. Are you guys ready? Let's go into service. Good morning, good morning, grace and peace to each and every one of you. Good morning to those that are joining us online. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Woo. We thank you for this day. Hallelujah. We thank you uh, for being our God. Mm the one who sits high, but you look low, the God who is concerned about everything that concerns us. So Father, we come this morning crying, Abba, Father, have mercy. This is a day, God, where we celebrate Palm Sunday, God. We are mindful, hata, wushikete, of that triumphal entry that you made, God. Hallelujah, God, as you, God, knew what was before you, God. You had us on your mind, and we thank you this morning, God. We're grateful, oh God, for the victory, oh God, hallelujah, that you, God, got for us, God, that sacrificial lamb, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that you became for us, God. That while we were yet in our sins, you died for us, God. And for this, we say thank you. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for your love. Hey, God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. It is everlasting. Hey, God, so. Oh, God, we thank you even now, God, as we wave our hands, as we wave our palms today, God. We wave them, oh God, as an offering unto you, God. Receive our sacrifice.
sacrifices today, God, as a sweet-smelling Savior. Hey, God, be pleased, God. Hallelujah with the songs of Zion. Be pleased, oh God, with the reading of your word. Be pleased, oh God, hallelujah, with all that we do and say. Father, for you said if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw, hallelujah, all men unto me. So we say, God, be lifted up today. Ah, in the name of Jesus. For you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega. And you are the beginning and the ending. Oh, God, don't let anyone leave. Ah, oh, God, the same way they came. Don't let anyone online, God, leave without receiving what they need, God. But we ask today, God, that you come in power. Fill this place. We thank you for the glory, hey, God, that's already here, God. Be glorified and magnified. Be lifted up and praised for whatever we do, God. We will do it all to your glory. Hallelujah. Hey, and all to your honor. And we thank you, God, for not only hearing, but we thank you for answering. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'll be reading Psalms 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will look only with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This morning, we are praying for the nations of Lebanon, Syria, Cyprus, Turkey, and Iraq. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for your peace, comfort, strength, provision, and salvation in these nations, Father. Let them come to know you. Let the people know and their leaders know that you are everything they need, that they can depend on you, Father. And we ask that you fill them with your Holy Spirit so that on that great day, they can present themselves before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? As we enter into worship, we invite you to lift your hands, sing along with us, and give God's name glory on this morning. Amen. I surrender
such a life-giving rebel. Live in this frame, God, let your glory reign.
Declarations for consecration. We decree and declare the servants of God will consecrate themselves unto the Lord God. They are his body and his voice on the earth. They are speaking forth his words to those whom he chooses to use, to the rulers and the nations. We decree and declare the Lord appoints rulers and he removes those who will not honor him. The Lord is seeking those who will consecrate themselves before him. Servants of God, it is time to be found by him. We decree and declare the Lord God Almighty is shining his spotlight, his glory upon his servants. Your time for rising has come. Prepare for his glory. We decree and declare the gains and excuses will no longer be tolerated by the Lord God Almighty. He is calling for consecrated and a set apart people. You will be holy unto the Lord. We decree and declare whoever is for the Lord, humbly present yourself to him in the name of Jesus Christ. He is separating you in this hour. We decree and declare the children of Lord God Almighty are moving in boldness and humility, casting out demons and healing the sick. They are filled with discernment to know those who are with the Lord and those who are not. We decree and declare the angelic hosts are standing round about those consecrated unto God to guide and protect them to strengthen them on their way. They will not allow them to stumble or to be caught off guard. Their lives are in the hand of the Lord. We decree and declare a cleansing and unifying of the people of God as these decrees go forth. You will be freed from all sins and weights. You will stand in the power of God. You will walk in the spirit of God. In the name of King Jesus, these decrees are valid, and they are meant only for those who will live consecrated unto the Lord Jesus Christ. The great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd praised him, celebrated his miracles, and with great expectation, told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might, but he came as a humble servant. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory, but he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They would soon realize that Jesus wasn't gonna be what they wanted, and they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. And as they yelled, crucify, Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that 
kind of king. His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. His kingdom is righteousness, forgiveness, and love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Come dwell in our hearts, Jesus Christ, our King. so good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank God uh, for this day that he has provided us and given us this opportunity uh, to be able to worship and praise, glorify, magnify his great uh, and his marvelous name. Be sure to turn to somebody else and tell them I'm glad to see you today. Come on, tell somebody else I'm glad to see you today. Those who are watching online, if you'll type it in the comment section, I'm so glad to see you today. It is good to be in, in the house of the Lord, uh, and we're just grateful for the opportunity to be able to worship Jesus Christ as King, Lord, and, and Savior for all that, that he has done and all he continues to do in the lives of, of his people. On this Palm Sunday, uh, we gather uh, to recognize all that the Lord uh, has done, and this week, as has been termed by many people as Passion Week or Holy Week, uh, we observe and understand that our Savior uh, went through a great ordeal just for during this week for the salvation of uh, our souls. And if anybody ought to celebrate what Jesus Christ uh, has done, it ought to be the church, right? It ought to be the church. If anybody could, can reflect and, and remember uh, the sacrifices that, that he made for us, it, it ought to be uh, the church. It's not being uh, religious or legalistic. It's just showing appreciation for what Jesus Christ uh, has done. So we gather today uh, to honor and, and to celebrate of the many wonderful things that he has done in uh, our lives. Today is also a Baptism Sunday as well, uh, and we're really excited about that. Those who are uh, considering today, uh, to make that wonderful step uh, of being baptized and that be that beginning that, that new life and even those who are said to themselves that they want to begin anew again. Uh, and so we're just really excited today uh, for all those things. And just today also begins our consecration uh, going into this week. So there's a lot of things that are happening, uh, but the Lord is in all things worthy to be praised and glorified now and forevermore. Can we repeat these declarations uh, after me today? I raise my voice to declare that this is my year of restoration. Everything I lost, misplaced, wasted, misappropriated, or was foreclosed, or was repossessed, or was stolen, shall be restored to me now. I acknowledge my sins. I've been washed in the blood. I am forgiven. Therefore, I know the Lord shall restore my life, my mind, my hope, my dreams, my family, my ministry, my health, my wealth, my time, my resources, my home, my business, my seed, my harvest, my inheritance, my name, and everything attached to me. His word is true. I refuse to doubt. The devil is a liar and a deceiver. The Lord will do what he said. Without fail, I shall recover all. Without fail, I shall recover all. Without fail, I shall recover all. He's doing it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as loud as you can say, this is my year, and today is my day. If you receive it for yourself, come on, clap your hands in the Lord's praise today. Those who are watching online, if you'll hit that like button, we are just appreciative. And we know uh, that the Lord shall restore it. He is doing it in uh, our lives. And it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It doesn't matter the mirage or uh, the smoke that the devil blows in our face. We know for sure God will do exactly what he said. And so we're expecting within this year, 
Everything that God promised, hallelujah, shall be restored. Everything I lost, everything I wasted, everything that I misappropriated shall be restored. And so we're grateful to God uh, for that. Let's prepare ourselves to bring the Lord uh, his tithe and to bring them also with uh, our offering. If you need the envelope today for the Lord's tithe or for your offering, simply raise your hand. The usher will get to come to you and assist you on today again. Give the envelope for the Lord's tithe for your offering, simply raise your hand. The usher is going to come to you uh, and assist you on today. We bring God uh, his tithe. Uh, the word tithe means tenth. So we bring the Lord a tenth of that which he allows us to be able to make. Uh, as we bring that to him, we activate the various promises of God that are to be uh, enacted upon uh, our lives. God says that if we would try him, prove him, uh, and he will open the windows of heaven, and pour us out blessing, we want to have room to receive. Now, we are an every member of a tithing church. We've been God his tithe individually and also corporately. And we know this, that when we do this, God said, I'll pour it out on you more than enough, more than enough. And so we discovered that that word enough not only means abundant, but more that can be talked about in a lifetime as well. We also bring out an offering. The offering works like the seed, works like the seed. So we plant the seed in the ground, and we know this, that whatever one sowed, that shall he also reap. That doesn't require a percentage of with the offering as much the tithe, but it tells us this, according to how you've been blessed, then accordingly you, uh, you shall give. So we are an every member giving church. We've got an offering in and also corporately, and the promise is, if you give it, shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and when over, shall be given to uh, your bosom. Now, some of you have been asking about the first fruit. Let me explain that really quickly. Next Sunday, next Sunday, we're bringing the, the uh, first fruit offering. Our Bible tells us that three times a year, Deuteronomy 2020, so three times a year, we're supposed to bring a first fruit offering to the Lord, three times a year specifically, and that is according to how the Lord uh, has blessed us. Now, there was no percentage uh, as to how much what uh, that actually is. Uh, most people do it around the, the 10%. Uh, but uh, you give God according to how you've been blessed. The practice was that whenever you brought God that offering the first fruit on those particular days, that God would activate a promise upon your life that would go throughout the entire year. So three times a year, the Lord required that uh, in the scripture. Now, we also understand that individuals, according to the Bible, they brought first fruit offerings throughout the year, and when they did that, because of how an increase that came into their life. So, for instance, if you were, you received a, a promotion on, on, on your job, or you uh, came into an inheritance, or uh, something significant happened, you brought God that first fruit offering to activate the promises of God over that thing as well. So we observe, especially the three times a year, we observe that because we want God to bless the entirety of uh, our year. And there are folks in this building right now and people who are online uh, who have been following the practice of bringing the Lord uh, that first fruit offering. And they know the benefits of just observing uh, the word of God and the activation of the promises over uh, our lives. So next Sunday, next Sunday, there'll be, there'll be special envelopes for that. Uh, and you can give that more next Sunday, which would be the first fruit Sunday, which also just coincides uh, with Resurrection Sunday. And this is an easy way to remember that. And anytime there's Resurrection Sunday, there's always first fruit Sunday. Because Jesus Christ rules on the feast of first fruits. So it's an easy way to remember that to be bring out an offering, uh, a first fruit offering specifically on uh, that day. Let's raise the Lord's tithe and our offering in the air. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to give. We bring to you your tithe to continue with our offering. Our request is simply this bless us indeed, increase our border. Let your hand be on us. Be us evil. We'll bring your honor and praise. We'll be thanking now in Jesus' name. Amen. Your ways to give are as follows. If you want to give today by credit card, and when you're more securely, there's a kiosk in the rear of the building. You can make your way there now to give. Again, those of you who need by credit card, the kiosk is open in the rear of the building. You can make your way there now to give. You can also give electronically, which is on your screen. The cash app is the dollar sign. City of God, now number one. City of God, now number one. Then most the at sign. City of God, now number one. Again, the at sign. City of God, now number one. The give the five is City of God. Highway Design. Those who are watching right now uh, from home, you want to get my credit card, call this number 410 75 8730. Someone think about the phone right now to receive your call and send you like a text receipt. You can always fill in the City of God Highway Design 1304. Business in a way, Edge of Miller, 
We're going to ask uh, these two sides stand and face one another. Uh, these two sides stand face one another. Ushers in the rear. They're going to make your mind. Doing great things. Thank you. 
announcements, acknowledge the birthdays and anniversaries. And if you're welcome, we'll be back for the morning call. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the City of God Highway to Zion Palm Sunday service. We are so glad you have joined us today. I am Sonia, and I'm here to give you your weekly announcements. But well, before we give you the weekly announcements, let's wish a happy birthday to Tyrone Brooks, Micaiah Donaldson, Kizia Hall, Dominique Garrett, Javi Smith, and Jonathan James. And to anyone else celebrating their birthday this week, happy birthday. And to anyone celebrating an anniversary, happy anniversary. And here are your weekly announcements here at the City of God. Our spring consecration begins tomorrow, Monday, March 25th, to Friday, March 29th. Each day from 12 midnight to 4 p.m., we will be fasting. And we will also have services at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Stay tuned for more information concerning the services. Next Sunday, March 31st, is Resurrection Sunday. Yes, come celebrate with us on Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And communion will also be served on this day. And get here early on March 31st, next Sunday, for Continental Breakfast and wonderful fellowship before service. April 3rd is our next corporate fast. Together we fast from 12 midnight to 4 p.m. It is so much to pray for. So join us as we together touch and agree in prayer and see God move. And on April 7th is the church anniversary. Come join us as we celebrate the rich history of Highway Holiness and Zion Temple Church. And now the city of God, Highway to Zion. So join us on April 7th for church anniversary. And those were your weekly announcements. Now, if you have any questions about anything you have heard, please email us at discover at cityofgodnow1.org. Again, that's discover at cityofgodnow1. And don't forget to join us next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday and communion will be served. Now, until then, you have a great day and a super week and stay tuned for our official welcome. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the City of God Highway to Zion. My name is Matt, and I'm here to give you your official welcome to our Sunday celebration. We welcome everybody that has chosen to join us here on the City of God Highway to Zion on today. Whether you are online, in person, wherever you are, we just want to express our love and gratitude to you for joining us on today. Ready, set, go. If you are joining us online, place a V or heart in the comment section so that we may properly welcome you. But if you are here for the first or second time in person, stand up, wave, just do something to get our attention so that we may properly welcome you. Please refer to our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more information on the following announcements or anything you've heard previously. Or you can call the church office at 410-725-8730. We believe that every day in 2024 will be a day of restoration, and because you have elected to join us here on today, it will be a day of restoration in you. Now, City of God, this is your chance to welcome our guests. Wherever you are in the sanctuary or online, send hugs, love, whatever you want to do just to make sure that everybody in the City of God feels loved on today. Again, we are so thankful that you have chosen to worship here at the City of God Highway to Zion on today. We hope that you enjoy the service to come and have a great week. Bye. I was knee deep in my failures. But now the waters of change wash over my head. I do this because I know who I am. I do this because I'm forgiven. I do this because 
he rose. I know no water can change me, but this water is a sign that change has occurred in my heart. My life will never be the same. So now I'm proclaiming it to the world. And just as Jesus was buried, I will be buried. Just as Jesus rose, I will rise. Faith, hope, love, none are greater than these. I have faith that Jesus is who he says he is. I have hope in his resurrection and his everlasting power. His endless love has forever changed my life. today uh, all those in advance right now who are making that decision to uh, receive Jesus Christ into to their lives our scripture today is Galatians chapter 3 Galatians 3 years I spent in vanity and pride caring not my Lord was crucified no was for me he died at Calvary mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me
about you, but I thank God for Calvary. Thank him for Calvary. Uh, I probably said every year that that was my mom's, uh, her favorite song. Uh, today would have been her birthday, and so we uh, always want to sing it in, in honor of her. Galatians 3, Galatians 3, verse 23, hallelujah, through 29. says this, now before faith came, so I need to pay attention to those words, before faith came, right? So now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, in prison until the coming faith would be revealed. So notice that. Before faith came, we were in prison until the coming faith. So then, the law was a guardian until Christ came. Y'all see that? So before faith came, we were all in prison until the coming of faith. The law was a guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come. Now the question is, who came? That's Jesus, right? That's Jesus. So before faith came, glory to God, we were held prison until the coming faith. The law was a guardian until Christ came. Now that faith has come, so now we know who faith is. Faith is Jesus. Do y'all see that? All right. So faith is Jesus. We are no longer under a guardian. Thank you, Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If folks would just read that verse, hallelujah, we'd free a whole lot of churches and a whole lot of people. Just that one verse right there, all right? Uh, verse 29, for you are, if, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offsprings, uh, heirs according to promise. I want to focus in on the 27th verse, where as many of you were baptized into Christ Jesus have put on Christ. Uh, once again, I want to talk to you uh, from the theme for the month uh, of March, which is approved. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you today for your love, your grace, your kindness in our lives. You're amazing. We love you. We praise you for who you are. Now breathe into us, Holy Spirit of God. Uh, that breath of life, the breath that brings change, that breath that brings revelation, uh, the breath that brings understanding. Father, thank you for being our faith. Hallelujah. You have come. And so since you're here in our lives and for what you've done, we know we have been accepted. We've been approved by you. May we begin to not only understand that, and we walk in it day by day. I thank you, I praise you. Now and always, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray, amen. amen. You can be seated. Uh, right before I get into the message today, uh, there are these uh, three young ladies who have on these purple shirts and they have the word approved on them. If you guys will stand and just kind of model real quickly for the church, I said, glory to God. <laughs> I saw them walking around and offering, and I said, well, okay, approved. Oh, approved. Oh, okay, approved. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. You know, I want to talk to you from the thought, uh, approved, approved. Have you thought about the power of a name? Have you thought about the power of a name? How powerful is a name. How powerful is a name? And then, what is the most powerful name that you know? What is the most powerful name that you know? Of course, the follow-up question would have to be, well, why is it so powerful? If you know that name to be the most powerful name that you know, why 
is that name so powerful? Personal question for you, uh, how powerful is your name? How powerful is your name? The names are an expression of a person's characteristic. They embody the birth of individual, parents, uh, well-wishers, godparents, others, uh, seek to try to find a, a, a name placement for uh, the child that is to be born to them. Uh, many will go through painstaking efforts trying to understand uh, or uh, find the appropriate name for their child that they're going to bear because they know that this child shall carry uh, this name uh, through life. And of course, sometimes parents don't always get it right, right? Uh, which means then, essentially, uh, a child may be named something and the parent might like the name, but the child may not necessarily care for a said name. So then they choose to uh, change their name over time. To call upon the name of an individual is to call upon their authority, to call upon their character, the office, the nature of who uh, they are. Names are so deeply personal for us that when... Uh, someone pronounces your name wrong and they habitually pronounce your name uh, wrong, uh, it starts to bother you over time. Amen. Uh, now, for those who have, you know, if your name's really easy, then it's, it's fine. But, you know, for those of us who, you know, I, have the, I don't know how people mess up Lamont for so much, but I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, and so um, people are particular about the name. I'm, I, I'll tell you right now, I, I, I am quite particular, uh, especially about the name uh, Lamont. It has a capital M in it. So if I see it lowercase, that is not me. I don't care what people say. I'm like, hmm, you know, uh, no, that, that's, that's not me. And so then uh, when I come into various places or positions and I'm serving in said place and they keep doing it wrong, I say, <clears throat> you know, that's not my name. They say, well, yes, it is. It's Lamont. I said, no, I have a capital M in, in my name. Why? Because people are particular about their name. It speaks to who they are. By the way, you know, uh, Jonathan uh, he has, there's no two, uh, it's a, it's uh, O and O, O-N-O, -O, right? So he does, it's not the traditional uh, Jonathan, it's Jonathan, yes, yeah. And so everybody has something, you know, it's a little different, and, and, and uh, people are particular about their name. The name expresses the value of, of someone, expresses the character of who they are. So the question would be is why are names so powerful? Why are they so powerful? It's because when we call upon the name of an individual, we speak to who they are, and also we speak to what they have done, which means then that a names, names are given to us at birth, but there are also names that by, by what we do that we gain. In other words, everybody has a given name and everyone has an earned name. Everyone has a given name. Everyone has an earned name. You might want to do this, you know, you know, with your family, friends, and some close folks you got to, and, and ask them, hey, when you hear my name, what do you think? <laughs> That's a fun experiment, right? <laughs> when you hear my name, you know, and, and tell them, take the veil off, the filter off, just be as brutally honest as possible. Uh, so, you know, I, I figured this out. I figured this out, that whenever anyone from the city of God hears a name, Lamont Turner, you say, oh, this is such great joy. We love him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, y'all just left me out there on a ledge. I was like, I, I was waiting for an applause. I'm like, yes. And I was like, Eh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> the name is a handle of an individual. It is all of their, their being. It's what we, what's brought to mind, what we grasp when we think about a person. Names are so important that people have decided to make it a part of their companies. There are a list 
uh, of companies, which is just super extensive, literally from all around the world from A to Z. I don't have the time to go through those, but I'm going to just point out a few company names that the founders have placed their family name uh, in it. Ford uh, by Henry Ford. Disney, Walt Disney and Roy O. Disney. McDonald's, Richard and Maurice McDonald. A and W restaurants. Some of you are old enough to remember that. Uh, others of you, uh, God bless you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's by Roy Allen and Frank Wright. Adidas, which is uh, Addy uh, Dossler or, or Adolf Dossler. Uh, Air Jordan, the greatest basketball player to ever live, Michael Jordan. <laughs> uh, Armani, which is Giorgio Armani. Michael Kors. Uh, Holden, which is, of course, Michael Cole. Uh, Gucci, Guccio Gucci. Harley Davidson, which is William S. Harley and Arthur Davidson. Barnes and Noble, William Barnes and J. Clifford Noble. Baskin Robbins, Bert Baskin and Arver Robbins. Uh, ben and Jerry's, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield. Chevrolet, Louis uh, Chevrolet. Chrysler, Walter Chrysler. For those who are in Texas, H-E-B, which is Howard Edward, but that's a grocery store. For those of you from Texas, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, Hewlett Packard, William Hewlett and David Packard. Marriott uh, Corporation, J.W.J. J., uh, Willard Marriott. Hilton Hotels, Conrad Hilton. Taco Bell, Glenn Bell. Uh, Tupperware Brands, Earl Tupper. Walgreens, Charles uh, Rudolph uh, Walgreen. Wegmans is Walt John and Walter Wegman. Wells Fargo, Henry Wells and William Fargo. And of course, everybody's favorite department store, Walmart. <laughs> Sam uh, Walton, Sam Walton. These individuals have cemented their names, and there's a whole list of other individuals, have cemented their names, and when we think about that particular name, that, that brand comes to mind. Some individuals oh, have been made famous because of somebody else's name. So you remember the guy from the Old Spice commercial uh, who used to sit uh, on the horse and uh, uh, would tell people to, to smell like a man? His, in his first uh, week of that commercial, he ended up making $1.6 million dollars. Uh, so he's made famous. Do you remember uh, the Wendy's commercial, The Lady Wears the Beef? Yeah. Uh, the Allstate uh, insurance guy, right? A State Farm uh, insurance guy. Uh, ben Affleck actually started uh, doing commercials before he was ever made famous, and he was doing Burger King commercials before he ever did any kind of movie. Uh, Drew, Barry, uh, Drew Barrymore, she started off with the Pillsbury uh, Dough Company um, doing commercials long before she ever was any, in any kind of film. Uh, Steve Carell started off with Brown's Chicken doing commercials uh, for them before we ever knew anything about him in films or even on uh, The Office. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio started off with, some remember the, the, the Bubble Yum Gum? He was doing commercials for, from them long before we even knew anything about him uh, in films. And of course, uh, the famous Morgan Freeman uh, did Listerine commercials before we ever knew who he was uh, in movies. My point is, some people, uh, their names are because of what they've done, and some people have gained a name because of what somebody else uh, has done, and now we know who they are. When it comes to God, uh, and the name of God. Wherever God places his name, he fully endorses and approves wherever he places his name. I'll say that again because that's super important. Wherever God places his name, wherever, wherever he places uh, his name, God endorses and he approves wherever he places uh, his name. So when the Lord told Solomon, that uh, if you'll build me a place for worship, I'll put my name there. When God told uh, David uh, and also Moses about the tabernacle, he said, if you'll build it, I'll put my name there. Which is also why uh, the importance of water baptism in the name of the Lord, because he puts, hallelujah, he puts his name 
there in the water. And believe it or not, for every believer who has received Jesus Christ, whether you like how they look or what they have on, or even if you think there's something super messy in their life, the fact that Jesus Christ put his name on them means that he endorses them, glory to Jesus, and he approves them. So uh, the Bible lets us know that God, wherever he would place his name, he would also dwell in uh, that place uh, because the, the, the Lord invokes uh, his name, his power, his presence in that place. I'm going to read to you a scripture. This is found in Exodus 20, verse 22 through 24, when the Lord was speaking to Moses about building an altar. Uh, he says, thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel that you shall uh, uh, you have seen that I've talked with you uh, from heaven. You shall not, uh, you shall not make uh, me uh, with me gods, gods of gold or, or silver. Uh, and he says, an altar of earth uh, shall you make. He says, uh, you shall sacrifice thereon the, the burnt offerings, peace offerings, uh, sheep and oxen. And here's where I wanted to get to. He says, in all places where I record my name, he says, I'll come to you and I will bless you. Wherever I record my name, then God says, I will come to you and bless you. So we know this, that the altar is a place where God has placed his name. The altar is a place where God has placed uh, his name. He's put his name, thank you, Jesus. He's put his name on the altar. So whenever you come and you're surrendering to God uh, at an altar or you're praying to God uh, at the altar, wherever that may be, in your home uh, or uh, in the church or wherever that place of surrender might be, God's name, hallelujah, his name is there. Now, notice always also that he said that if he records or puts his name there, he says, I will bless you there, which means then that wherever God places his name, there is a blessing. Wherever God places his name, there's a blessing. So then uh, there's a blessing at the altar because he put his name there. There's a blessing in the sanctuary because he put his name there. There's a blessing in the water of baptism because he put his name there. Hallelujah. And your brother or your sister sitting next to you, there's a blessing in them and on them. Why? Because he put his name on them. Put his name on them. At the end of every service, you will hear me uh, make this a uh, priestly declaration. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you uh, peace. This is found in uh, Numbers, uh, the sixth chapter, starting at verse number 24. And uh, it was the uh, a priestly blessing that the Lord told Aaron to give to the people of God uh, as they were leaving or being dismissed. They were told to pronounce God's blessings over uh, their life. They're told. Uh, the Lord uh, bless you wherever you go, whatever you do, may his blessings rest uh, upon you. And then uh, this blessing not only entails uh, the favor of God, but the protection of God, the security of God. So the Lord uh, bless you wherever you are, wherever you go, may his blessing <laughs> rest upon your life. It goes on to say, may he make his face to shine on you. May he make his face uh, shine on you. When we're saying this, we are, are, are declaring, may God turn his face in your direction. Hallelujah. And may the Lord look directly at you always. And as he looks at you uh, face to face, that means you have the full attention of Almighty God. Child of God, I need you to know, you never want to get to a place where God turns his head away from you. The blessing is that not only will God let his favor rest upon you, but we're declaring at the same time, may God always be looking at you directly in your face. 
meaning then that may you always have the full attention of Almighty God. May, may, uh, may you always be in the audience or in the line of sight uh, of God. Uh, may you and I, you and God, uh, lock eyes on one another. And when the Lord turns his face uh, towards you, like he did uh, with Moses, may, and like he did with uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, may he make his face shine in your direction. Hallelujah. Which would entail this, uh, that whenever it's God's face, it not only turns in your direction, uh, and he is, meaning you have his attention, but when his face is shining upon you, that is to say that may God continually provide revelation to you. May God make known to you what you do not know, and may God make it very clear as to what you're supposed to do. So when you hear me at the end of service, and you're hearing me say, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you, please know we're not just going through just this little ritual and just saying a bunch of words. What I want is, one, that God's blessing rests upon you wherever you go, along with favor, protection, and security. I want the Lord his face to always be looking in your direction but I'm also asking God and pronouncing may the Lord make clear to you everything you need to know may he make it clear so you're not walking in obscurity or you're trying to wonder and understand uh, which way to go because I'm pretty sure if I were to ask you, uh, raise your hand if you are uh, wanting to know clear uh, God's will, almost every hand would go up in this place if I were to say to you, are you, are you sure with the direction you, you're supposed to go uh, and, and raise your hand, I'd also see some hands go up and others would be like, well, I'm not really sure. So the, 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 the blessing is, may the Lord make exactly clear to you what it is you need to know. And then followed by, may the Lord be gracious to you. May he be gracious to you. Meaning then, uh, may God strengthen you and prevent, hallelujah, pitfalls in your life. May he strengthen you and help you to avoid the pitfalls that are there. May he make his countenance, hallelujah, uh, uh, be upon you and followed by God granting you peace. In other words, but as God is turning his face towards you and shining in your direction, uh, may the countenance of God, what does that mean, pastor? Well, the countenance of God uh, indicates discernment. Indicates discernment. So what we're suggesting or saying in the blessing is that may God give you discernment. So when, when something false uh, comes your way that you're not fooled, may, may God grant discernment to you. So when the adversary, because he is extremely clever, extremely clever, he will he'll present something that appears to be the truth with just a slight, small deviation. And if you aren't uh, clear, if you aren't sure, uh, then you will receive uh, that which is, uh, is falsified when in fact uh, God is saying, well, but, I, but I'm not in that because I didn't say that part right there. So may he make his uh, countenance be upon you. And then may God give you peace. May give you peace. Uh, may, may the Lord allow, thank you, Jesus, uh, all anxieties, frustrations that you have just to begin to melt away in your life. And here's this last part, which I think is just so profound. Most of us always stop in verse number 26, and we don't go into the 27th verse because it's actually not really a part of the blessing, but rather it's what God was saying. He says, uh, when you do this, uh, then uh, by doing so, you shall put my name upon Israel, and I'll bless them. So, you, you might ask, so why do we do this blessing? Well, the reason for uh, doing the blessing, hallelujah, is uh, the blessing in itself, and I had the time today to kind of walk you through the characters, the Hebrew characters of that exact uh, 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 priestly benediction or blessing. It actually has the name of God upon it. Which is why, for those of you who have ever, if you've ever seen a, uh, a Jewish rabbi 
uh, who will pronounce the blessing. They're, they're usually uh, holding their, their fingers uh, over uh, their head, and as they're doing that, uh, it, it's symbols of uh, the name of Yahweh or the name of the Lord, uh, that the symbols that they're making to pronounce God's blessing. In other words, what they're saying is that when we make this uh, blessing declaration over your life, we are declaring God's name over you. So, literally, even before we, we get to in Jesus' name, the entire utterance of blessing is the name of God over you, which, which then says that not only does God put his name in the sanctuary, not only is his name on the altar, not only is his name in the water, but the name of the Lord is on his people. Now, keep in mind, as we're tracking, Wherever the name of the Lord is, there's a blessing. Wherever his name is, there is a blessing. <clears throat> ah. For those who, 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 who seek to journey through the revelation of Jesus Christ, you're reading the last book of the Bible, and you are trying to understand what we believe to be the concepts of the last day. Um, let me help you, I said this before, but it merits saying it again, stop looking for the Antichrist. The book is not about the Antichrist. Stop looking for the false prophet. The book is not about the false prophet. Stop looking for the mark of the beast. The book is not about the mark of the beast. Even though it mentions those things, it's not about them. The book itself is entailed in the first few words of its opening, Revelation 1 and 1. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So what you're looking for is Jesus when you read the book. And as you read the book of the Revelation, you're, you'll find Jesus. And one thing that you'll find quite prevalent throughout the book is the seal of the name of God upon the people. As a matter of fact, for all of my people who are, you know, you're, you will understand the mark of the beast and all those things that are there, I, I challenge you to do this. Read Revelation and find out how many times the name or the seal of God is mentioned opposed to the mark of the beast. And you're going to find that the seal of God is mentioned way more than the mark of the beast. However, the problem is that the way the human brain works, we always hyper-focus on negativity. And we miss the, the, the blessing and the pronunciation. How do I know this? Well, uh, we can declare a blessing over your life and uh, a service happens, a, a prophet speaks, or the word of the Lord comes to you directly. You are enthused and empowered by that word. You are rejoicing in the word of God. And after service, about an hour later, one person says one crazy thing to you and it knocks all the entire blessing that you had just received. And you start hyper-focusing like that, 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 that vinyl record that kept skipping. And it keeps repeating over and over again. And all you can keep thinking about is that negative thing. And it just keeps on skipping. It keeps on repeating. And everything that God just said to you, you just forgot. Child of God, the Bible talks about this uh, numerous times that the children of God are sealed uh, by the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that he would put his name in the forehead of those uh, who would belong to him. And the, the question would come in then is, uh, why would God place his name on our lives, but yet even more, why would he place his name on the forehead of the believer? What's the significance? And of course, you'd want to know, does this, is this a, a, a literal tattooing of the name of God on your forehead? Is this a, 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 some sort of microchip that is placed within the forehead uh, of the in individual? Or is this something metaphorical that God or symbolic that God is speaking? Is a symbolism, in other words, that God is doing because he says, what I will do is put my name, hallelujah, I'll put my name on you. And in the symbolism, it's a spiritual, glory to God, a spiritual marking, a spiritual antidote that shows the adversary that that one belongs to me. 
How do we know that? Ezekiel the ninth chapter. When God was going to bring about destruction, uh, the Bible shows he sent angels out to mark the people. Angels out to mark the people. And there was this one man, the Bible says, who has a shepherd's pouch who went through and he marked all those who were the Lord's. Now, the Bible never showed where we saw a physical marking on them. Yet, uh, when angels of destruction went forth, they knew who to touch and who not to touch. And the ones that they did not touch are those who had the name of God on them. What you don't realize is that his name is on you right now. And, and even though life might be challenging, his name is on you. Now, with that being said, that also uh, uh, shows the adversary that that one belongs to God. It shows him that one belongs to God. Now, you need not fear because just because the adversary knows that you belong to God doesn't mean that he has uh, a, an advantage over you because with the name of God on you, it comes with the protection of God. There is benefits to this because whenever God places his name, the Bible tells us in, in, in Exodus that it is a, a, a line of distinction. Line of distinction. Which... Literally is this, that what God does is he is drawing a line around you. The indication in, in Exodus, the line of distinction was a bloodline. I love you, Jesus. So what he did is draw a bloodline all around you. So wherever you go, hallelujah, the line of protection is following you because his name was on you. So then, the adversary can only come so close. What we're missing is this. Just because he's barking at you doesn't mean he can get you. Just because he's threatening you doesn't mean he can overcome you. There's too much word that goes with you. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Every time that would rise against you in judgment, God said he would condemn. If God be for you, he is more than the world against you. In all things, we are more than conquerors. There's just too much word uh, that goes with you. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds uh, his people. He will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your foot against a stone. There's just too much word surrounding you. So, our, our issue is the barking. It's the barking. Because over time it becomes a nuisance. It's irritating. It's, it's annoying. And what the enemy wants is for you to come up under the protection of the name that's actually on your life. Let me also explain to you, not only is the name of Jesus on your life for divine protection, but according to Scripture, the power of the name of God on your life, all healing springs forth in your life, which means, glory to God, because his name is on you, then healing follows me wherever I go. Child of God, you don't know what you have, so therefore we don't walk in what's actually out. Because his name is there, all resources follow you. Well, what if I told you that if you would just walk in the name of God all the time, that everything you do would be blessed? What if I said to you that if you would just follow his name and keep his name over your life, that you would never be broke another day in your life? What if I said to you that because the name of God is over your life that the devourer is rebuked and cannot touch you? Oh. <clears throat> Child of God, I can tell you this. I, I can tell you all those things with great assurance because they're actually in the book. Yeah. They're in our Bible. 
But unfortunately for most of us, what we do is that we will we'll buy a product, we'll get a product, and we never read the manual. So we don't know the benefits that are actually ours. So we walk uh, without privileges and warranties because we don't even know what's actually ours. When in fact, with the name of God, which is why he tells us that in all you're getting, get understanding. Which is why uh, Bible study is important. Which is why reading the word of God is so important. Which is why coming to church is so important. Which is why listening to the word of God is so important. Because it unlocks for us the levels of understanding. So that now we'll be able to receive and walk into everything that God has promised. The power of of his name also confers all authority on your life. Uh, child of God, I need you to know, according to scripture, you can find this in uh, uh, Matthew 10, verses one and two, because of the authority of God that's on, on your life, you have power over all devils. <clears throat> now, let me help you out. For those of you uh, who um, understand any kind of aspect of demonology, uh, you'll understand there are different ranks of demons, right? Different ranks of demons. So there are some uh, who, rule over, who rule over regions or territories. Our Bible shows that there are what we call principalities. These are princes uh, who have authority over regions or countries. For every principality, what we call darkness, there is a prince of light, which is from the kingdom of God. The only reason why the devil put a spirit of darkness over a certain area is because he already knew that God had princes or angels of light over those areas and he was trying to counteract the presence and the blessings of God there. That's one thing. Demons come in ranks. They come in ranks. And they move in ranks in thighs. Uh, and so as they maneuver and, and do uh, uh, what they do, following the orders and the edicts of uh, uh, their captain, their, their, their leader, uh, you and I often uh, are the recipients of uh, alleged attacks that they forge against you. So we will are quick to point out, that's nothing but the devil. We'll do it quickly. Oh, that's the devil. Oh, I see it. Uh, forgetting that the Bible says all authority of uh, over demonic spirits have been given to you. Now, understand the text. He didn't say you had authority over some. What he said is that you have authority over all. Which means, God, I thank you today. It's not just those low-ranking devils that you can cast out. It's not the, the, the mid-ranking devils that you can cast out. But you have authority to be able to cast out high-ranking devils as well. God, I love you today. Hear what I'm saying to you. Now, the Bible, glory to God, the Bible never told you to fight them. God said, cast them out. Mm, Jesus. Oh, God, I was about to mess up and say something. <laughs> He never told you to go back and forth with them. So if you are, <laughs> if you are wrestling with them and you're going back and forth with them, then you're working too hard. Because the scripture said, cast, cast them out. Well, how can I do that? You have the name of God on your life. And according to James, the second chapter, it says that, that the devils know that there's one God, and he trembles. And imagine this, you carry the name of the one God on your life. Which is why, child of God, when you start declaring the name of Jesus, uh, some of you are old enough to have been raised in some old school churches, uh, and you're, you, you know, you were, you've seen some revival moments, and uh, while we were in revival services, uh, we start singing, you know, oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. We say, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. 
And then sometimes in those services, you'd hear somebody go, Rrr. Mm -hmm. And when we heard it, we'd go, Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then oh, they, they, you might hear them go, Rrr. And so uh, some saints would start, they keep singing it, while others would say, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> they, they'd be saying, Jesus. And I, <laughs> go over to God. While, while they're saying, Jesus, this, that demon that was dormant inside that person that showed up at the service along with the rest of us grew increasingly, uh, un increasingly uncomfortable because of the name of Jesus. So the saints would keep saying it more. And the more they said Jesus, the more they made that demon uncomfortable until we cast that devil out. Let me say to you, there are some things that you learned in the old school church that still apply today, and that is the power of the name of Jesus. I know we want to advance. I know we want to do a number of things, but we can never move away from the power of the name Jesus. It's by that name we are saved. By that name we are delivered. By that name we are healed. And it's by that name that demons are cast out. Hear me, child of God, you're working too hard. You're busy fighting with your child back and forth, arguing, no, sis, no, bruh. How about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? You know, they, they may leave the house going with their friends and walk in that room in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Glory to God. While you're, while you're folding their clothes, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? There is something powerful about the name Jesus. Jesus and the truth is some of you were kept from some stuff because your mama your grandmother your uncle your father your grandfather a pastor somebody was declaring the name of Jesus over your life and somehow you ended up in church crying at an altar it's because somebody was declaring the power of the name Jesus There is power in that name. Now, I don't have time today to kind of walk you through, uh, you know, a um, language class and, and, and deal with the how we come or derive the name Jesus uh, as it is. Uh, and because uh, that would take too long to kind of show you the characters and, and how it has derived of that. Uh, but uh, in Hebrew, it is the uh, Yah. Uh, is the beginning, first three letters, and the Shua uh, is at the end. The Yah uh, means that he is or exists. It's the Shua, glory to God, that uh, attaches power and salvation behind it. So uh, we, uh, the, the name which, which was written is the Yahshua, uh, which indicates uh, there he is, hallelujah, he is power. Uh, he is salvation. That's how he exists. He exists as power. He exists as salvation. Now the beauty of this is that in whatever language it is translated, hallelujah, whether it is in Hebrew, and you're seeing Yeshua, or it is in Greek uh, as Isuus, or you use in English uh, as Jesus, or you use in Spanish <laughs> or as Jesus. If, however, however you are uh, declaring that, that name, I need you to understand 
understand that the name of Jesus is powerful in any language. It does not matter uh, what language or however it translates. It's that name Jesus. And the truth is, I know you're brilliant. I know you're smart and all those things. You do not need to convert to Judaism or become a Messianic Jew because then you throw yourself back under the law. The truth is that you got saved calling on the name of Jesus. You didn't know a one thing about Yeshua. You had no idea about Yeshua or Hamashek or any of those things. All you knew is that I need Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. And if the name of Jesus saved you at salvation, that same name is equally powerful today to keep you through all your life. And can I tell you this? That name Jesus uh, kept your ancestors. They didn't know anything about a Jesus or a Yeshua or Isus or anything. All they knew what was Jesus. So they sang about Jesus and they talked about Jesus. They didn't understand Greek. They didn't understand Hebrew. But they knew there's power in that name. And they would say things like, oh, you can't keep saying his name and something not happen to you. You can't keep calling on his name and something not stir uh, inside you. And uh, so I grew up in an era where you see them walking around the house and they say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, you'd be at the church and uh, they're in the kitchen cooking, uh, frying fish and chicken, and you hear about Jesus. You know, and then, uh, you'd see them uh, uh, in the sanctuary cleaning, uh, and you'd hear somebody say, Jesus. Now, nobody was talking to them. Nothing was happening special. There was no music. There was no song, but there was a revelation about the name Jesus, and they knew the more I think about that name, something begins to stir on the inside. And child of God, I need you to know that it rings true still today. If you can think about that name, even when you can't say it out of your mouth, if you can think the name Jesus. All right. Let me get you another way. Let me get you another way. So, so some of you have um, experienced what, what doctors will call sleep paralysis, right? Sleep paralysis, where um, you're sleeping and you find yourself unable to move, right? Uh, and of course, some of you notice that in during those times of, of sleep paralysis, you're, it's like you're pinned to the bed and there is this spirit that's trying to choke you. And you're trying to utter words uh, out of your mouth, uh, and you can't feel like you, you can't breathe, you can't move. Sometimes you feel like that something heavy is just on you and you can't do anything. I need you to understand this, and I love this about God. Even in, the, even in this state where you're pinned down and you can't do a thing, isn't it interesting that you can think Jesus? Glory. You're just thinking Jesus. That devil tries to intensify, and all you kept doing is Jesus, Jesus. You couldn't say it out of your mouth, you just kept thinking it. And all of a sudden, that spirit uh, began to, to lift off for you. You woke up, uh, and you're like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But the truth is, hallelujah, even when you couldn't say it, hallelujah, it's still powerful. Even when you can just think it, it is equally powerful. It's just something, something about that name. Something about that name. So uh, there's some ver various things that I, I want to point out to you. So what does the name of Jesus do? I want to spend time. What does the name of Jesus do? Well, to be baptized in Jesus' name uh, takes away your sins. Uh, a person can be healed uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, you're justified by the name Jesus. Obviously, the Bible shows us his name is more excellent. It's more excellent than any other name. His name is above every other name. By the way, uh, when, you, when, you, when you see me write the name Jesus, or you see it typed, because you, you don't want to see me writing manuscript, because my, my manuscript is horrible. You know, it's, just, it's, it's hideous. So I type. Uh, I, I deliberately write the name Jesus in all caps because his name 
for me cannot be on the same level as mine. It just, it just can't be. I'm not telling you to do it. You can do it any way you want to. But for me, I can't put his name on the same level as mine. And if I'm funny about the M in Lamont, I can't, I can't have that M capital and the L capital in Lamont and have the J capital and everything else lowercase. Not for me. So I have all those, uh, his name in all caps because for me, his name is above. It's above every other name. So um, a person be, uh, who believes in his name becomes a child of God. A person who receives his name uh, or believes his name receives life. There's no other name uh, under heaven but whereby we must be saved. When we gather, we gather in the name Jesus. So let me say this then. So when, when we baptize, and which will take place in just a moment, there is the, the seal of the name of God that's in and on the water. Now, let me dispel any kind of myths or mysteries that you might think. This is... <coughs> ordinary water that we use a water hose to come from that mop sink all the way into that tub. You can Doug Ringo, you know, specializes in draining and filling our tub up. He'll tell you it's just ordinary water. There wasn't nothing special that we didn't bring this water in from Israel. It does not come from the Jordan River. This is ordinary water. Uh, we didn't even take a vial of the Jordan River and mix it <laughs> and mix it in with the water. We just used the water hose from the, the mop sink and we ran it all the way uh, into the tub. So that's just ordinary water. Ordinary water, same water that you, you would bathe yourself with, wash your clothes, wash your dishes, and those things. Same kind of water. But the difference is, glory to God, that, that, that tub, that galvanized tub that was that barred at a, a farm store, which is often sometimes used for, for tractor feed, we decided we're bringing that into the house of God. And we're going to dedicate that tub specifically for baptism. So when we gather over to Jesus and we are coming to this ordinary water with a tub that we bought from a farm store, we gather around and now we, pron glory you, we pronounce the name of Jesus in and over the water. It's so powerful, we're not spending hallelujah, hours of praying for the water. We just pray for the water in Jesus' name that everyone who is baptized, Lord, may, may they feel your presence here in Jesus' name. We're not mixing uh, anointing oil in the water. Just pray for it. The difference, though, is, is Romans, the sixth chapter, and the fourth verse. That we are buried with him, therefore, in baptism and the death to rise to walk in newness of life. Now, here's the thing. That although we pray for the water, although it's just ordinary water, although it's just an ordinary tub, and Pastor Jessica uh, fancily put these signs in front of the tub and on the tub today so that people would, you know, you can see the beginning of this new life. What you don't see right now, hallelujah, Romans 6, 4, we're buried with Christ in baptism unto death to rise to walk in news of life. What you don't understand or you don't see right now is Jesus is in that water. <laughs> yeah. It might be far-fetched for you, like, oh, he's just over the spirit. No, I'm not. So I, I was uh, about eight years old, about eight years old. We were, we were living in Chattanooga, Tennessee. There's this man came into the church. My father had started a church there. We are in a little storefront uh, church. And... Um, I think I told this the other week in, in, in Bible study, but anyways, um, that's preaching. This man comes in. 
he is inebriated. This is my first witness of this. I've had many others, but this is my first time seeing this. He comes in, he's all loud. Uh, we're singing the songs of, of Zion. He's, ah! So we, we can recognize something, you know, something not right there. And it didn't take us too long to figure out what was going on because the smell followed him. Right? He reeked of alcohol, so we knew. He, he's intoxicated. So uh, deacons came, set him in the front row beside them. Dad's preaching. He keeps trying to get up and, and preach with Dad. At one point in time, he found his way to the pulpit, sitting right beside Dad. I know. Uh, the deacon was trying to run and grab him. Dad said, just leave him alone. Dad took his arm, put it around him, kept on preaching about Jesus. The more he preached, the more the man wept. Uh, he then says, uh, we're going to pray for you. So I was doing the altar call. Pray for the man. The man says, uh, I want to be saved. Now, mind you, he's still inebriated. We took that man, they changed uh, his clothes, helped him, and we took him to the water to be baptized, I told you, in the name of Jesus. This man, who was verifiably intoxicated, we baptized in that wonderful matchless name, Jesus. When the man comes up uh, out the water, he's completely sober. <laughs> Glory to God. No, no smell of alcohol. He's completely in his right mind. He then starts saying, well, how did I get here? He then starts, glory to God, he starts telling us a story that while he was in the bar, I love you, Jesus, while he was in the bar, a man came to him and said, go down that little church on 9th Street because you need to be changed. Oh, Jesus. He said, I'd, I'd never seen this man before, but this man sat beside me at the bar and told me, go down to that night street on church on 9th Street so you can get your life changed. He said, so I came down here. I didn't know, and I was looking for the man, but I never found him. But all of a sudden, uh, uh, here I am, and I feel so much better, he said. Sent, glory to God. Since that time, I've not only seen people uh, who came in the water and were drunk or high, either one, but I've also seen people uh, get healed in the water. Why? Because there is something powerful about the name of Jesus. You cannot take on that wonderful name Jesus and something not change in your life because he changes everything about you when you receive his name. Child of God, you only pray, but in the waters of baptism, what happens is the sign and the seal of the family name, which is Jesus, is impressed upon you. So, you'll notice that when we baptize you, they're not going to baptize you in the name of Lamont Turner. It's going to do nothing for you, I promise you. Nothing at all. Now, uh, my name might carry some weight in some places. As a matter of fact, sometimes I tell folks, when you go, go there, tell them, uh, mention my name, tell them I sent you. Uh, margaritas in, in, in Bel Air, pizza place. Oh, God. oh, they know me. They know me. I don't even have to, uh, most times, even tell them my name over the phone. I'll just say, I'll place my order, they say, all right, Mr. Tony, we'll see you in 15 minutes. I'll see you there. I walk in the store, uh, and I'm coming in, and they start getting my, my pizza order, bringing it to me. I'll see them about 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, <laughs> 8 o'clock tonight. Um, every Sunday, yeah, I have pizza. Well, Fridays and Sunday, but anyways, that's a whole other issue. Uh, so I walk in, and then uh, so the other week I went in, and... Uh, the lady says to me, um, who are you? You're, you're, what's your name? I said, I'm talking, looking like, well, you don't know me? I said, it's Turner. And the lady behind it, the other lady says, oh, you don't know Mr. Turner? The, the cook from the back came out and said, hey, Mr. Turner, how you doing? Uh, another girl who was sweeping the floor said, oh, yeah, that's Mr. Turner. The guy who was waiting in line with me says, well, how you doing, Mr. Turner? <laughs> My name might carry weight in some spaces, 
but my name can't take away your sins. My name cannot heal you. My name cannot deliver you. My, my name cannot, cannot save you. Now, you might get pulled over by the police and, <laughs> and you might mention my name and, and if they know who I am, they may let you off, but probably chances they may not. But there is a name that is above every other name. There is a name, over to God, that makes every demon tremble. There is a name that heals all sicknesses and all diseases. There is a name that brings peace and deliverance. There is a name that wakes, makes ways out of no ways. There is a name that brings comfort. There is a name that brings victory. There's a name that fights for you. And child of God, if that name is Jesus, Jesus, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. I will forever declare Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, his name is above every other name. Hallelujah. Oh, I love his name. I love it. I love his name. So we preach in Jesus' name. We baptize in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name because that's the authority. And just like the over to God, just like individuals have made names for him, themselves, he's made a name for himself. And as I mentioned to you earlier, that some people have a name, they, they became famous because of somebody else's name. When you, oh God, uh, I wish I had something. I left it back in the back. Uh, uh, bring me one of those, those drop cloths. <laughs> Yesterday, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, as I'm finishing my notes yesterday, the Lord said this to me. He says, let them know that when, I, when they're baptized in my name, what happens is I wrap them. I wish I had enough fabric to cover my whole body, but he says, I wrap them in my name, which is what Paul says, that our life is hid with Christ and God. So when we go forth, wherever we go, we are covered by the name Jesus. This is the, the baptism is not just because, you know, we are a Pentecostal church and we believe in water, but no, no, no. It's, it's beyond that. It's beyond that. It's, it's more than just being a, a Christian. It is being uh, protected and covered by the family name. It means now I belong to this family. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, those who are in this room, those who are watching online, I've attempted in my way to make known the power of your name, Jesus. And it is by that name that we are accepted, that we are <laughs> approved. You literally endorse us because you put your name on us. Blesses me to know. Father, in just a few moments, there are individuals who are coming to the waters of baptism to take on the wonderful name Jesus. They're, they're ready for that life change today. I pray today that, Father, just the small stories I shared about baptism, that they might experience that for themselves today and know the great change that you make. Father, I pray today 
that every person that is here, may they embrace the wonderful name Jesus and know that your name is on their life. And wherever your name is, there's a blessing. There's a blessing. Father, may your name become so loud in our ears that it drowns out the noise and the negativity of the devil. May, may the name Jesus, may the name Jesus, the name that we speak, the name that we declare, may that name Jesus, may it transform every part of our being. I thank you. I know it does. In Jesus' name, amen. We're standing in this moment today. There are those who are here. And uh, you said to yourself, come in here today. I want to be baptized. I want to make that change. This is your moment today. Is at that time. Others of you, you heard the message spoke, and you decided while the message was going forth, hey, I want to get baptized. This is your opportunity to do so. We've got uh, clothes for you. We've got individuals who are ready to uh, take you back so they can prepare you for uh, water baptism. If that's you today, and if you want to make that, that, that declaration in your life, that change in your life, uh, will you come uh, to the front just for a moment? Uh, you want to uh, you wanna be baptized today, uh, whoever you are, whatever, uh, wherever you are, will you come today? I need you to know that, that Jesus loves you with a love that's absolutely everlasting. His love never stops. It, it, it never quits. It goes on and on. He has given uh, his name for our transformation, for our change, for our life. And that's you today. Uh, will you come, someone? Will you come? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have individuals who are waiting to join you. While those who are deciding to come, if you des desire prayer today, and you want Christ to do something in your life, whatever that, that might be, we want to pray with you. We want to pray for you today. He saves, he heals, he delivers, he makes ways. You just want prayer today. Will you come? We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. Those who are watching online, we want to pray with you as well. Put your name in, in, in the comment section. You can raise your hand in the comment section with an emoji. Someone said it right now by to pray with you and pray for you. Anyone who is here today, if you, you want to go to God. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. Will you come? Will you come? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. They want to get baptized. Wonderful. Wonderful. Will you clap your hands? We do have candidates uh, for, for baptism. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So those who are helping with baptism, will you guys come and, and let's... Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you today. Jesus makes great changes. His name makes a difference. His name makes a difference. In his name there is power, there is deliverance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. Yes, 
Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. His love doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. His love doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Hallelujah. His love doesn't stop. face things in life, something that we have to go through, something that we contend with, but there's something powerful about that name Jesus. There's something, something wonderful about that name Jesus. So as we pray together, those who are watching online, we're praying for you now in Jesus' name. Father, we come to you together hands joined one with the other believe in you God today for your power, your presence your spirit to move within the lives of these individuals thank you for my brother, my sister that stands with us today, God here in, in this room and those who are watching online the beauty is that you know exactly what they're going through and you know God the, the, the need uh, that they have Father, I come to you today praying for uh, each one that you will move in their life. And although our needs might be different, and although, God, the things that we go through, the severity of those things might be different, and although, God, we all process uh, uh, what we go through differently, there's one name, hallelujah, there's one name that's applied to every situation. There's one name, one name that speaks over every individual. There's one name that brings healing for every sickness. There's one name, just that one name, hallelujah. It's the one name, the one name that brings deliverance and brings victory 
It's the one name that brings peace. It's that one name. It's that one name. Hallelujah. That provides clarity. It's the one name that has salvation. It's the one name. The one name that has a blessing. It's the one name. And that is Jesus. Hallelujah. It's Jesus. So I declare the name of Jesus over my brother, my sister. I speak the name of Jesus over your sickness right now. I speak the name of Jesus over your diagnosis. I speak the name of Jesus over your disease. I speak the name of Jesus over your problems, over your trouble. I speak the name of Jesus over your chaos. I speak the name of Jesus over your family. I speak the name of Jesus over your finances. I speak Jesus over your house, over your job. I speak the name of Jesus over your neighborhood. I speak the name of Jesus over your business. I speak that name, the name Jesus, the name of Jesus over your plans, your dreams, your goals. I speak the name of Jesus over every demonic attack that you're experiencing right now. I speak the name of Jesus against every devil. Hallelujah. I speak the name of Jesus over this church. I speak the name of Jesus over your car. I speak the name Jesus over your life. I declare the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you because I know this. There's healing in your name. There's deliverance in your name. There's salvation in your name. There's change in your name. There's peace in your name. Hallelujah. Everything we need is in the wonderful, powerful name Jesus. We will sing of it for the rest of our lives. Hallelujah. We will declare it for the rest of our days. We'll preach it. Hallelujah. Because there's power in it. We'll pray it in the wonderful name of Jesus. We'll walk in it. Hallelujah. There's power in your wonderful name. And I thank you because I'm called by your name. We're called by your name. We are sealed by your name. We are approved by the wonderful name Jesus. So Father, I pray today, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. That you'll move in every situation. Be glorified. Be glorified. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It brings change. It brings change. Oh, yes, it does. It brings change. It brings change. That wonderful, powerful name. While there are others who are, or those are preparing and about to come out for baptism, if there's somebody else today uh, who wants to uh, take on the wonderful name of Jesus through the waters of baptism, this is a perfect time on this Palm Sunday uh, to do that as we will receive Christ today. We're going to ask you to uh, not move too quickly. We're going to uh, baptize these individuals, but consecration starts tomorrow. And we're going to pray a prayer of consecration over all the individuals who are here today, uh, especially those who are going to go uh, on consecration along with us. We're going to pray God's blessings uh, over your life as we begin this consecration. And so please uh, close your place for just a moment. As we prepare uh, for that, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a special, wonderful day this is. What a special, wonderful day this is. Glory to God. What a special, wonderful day this is. Thank you, Jesus.
of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. My name is Jesus. My beloved Jesus. brother, for your faith that you have found in Jesus Christ. And for remission of your sin, we baptize you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. sister, upon the confession of your faith in the blessed word of God, concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of your Lord Jesus Christ, indeed now we baptize you in the name of Jesus. Confession of your faith and belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in Jesus' name. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. sing it. Sing along uh, with us. Sing it with confidence. Sing, sing it like you know it's real, like, like you know it's true. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have a victory.
Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I love that name, Jesus. I love the name. Hallelujah. Something about the name, Jesus. Something about the name, Jesus. It is the sweetest name. about that name Jesus something something about that name Jesus start tomorrow well actually at midnight um, each day Monday through Friday we're fasting from midnight to 4 p.m. Uh, we've got services each day at 12 noon and at 7 p.m. all those services will be uh, online with the exception of Friday Friday uh, we're gonna do something we have not done in, in quite a number of years pre-pandemic and that's foot washing um, so you are welcome to come to be a part of the Friday service at noon and or 7 p.m. Uh, whichever service time you choose as a matter of fact uh, if you've got something going on that day the church will be open from noon to 7 that way you can come by and participate in, the, in a foot washing service all throughout from noon until 7 uh, p.m. so we'll do that on uh, on Friday. Um, now, of course, I know I just probably threw the, the, our media team in an upheaval because this is the, their first time hearing it. Don't worry. This morning was the first time I heard it. Uh, so we all getting this fresh. <laughs> I woke up this morning. The Lord says, I have foot washing on Friday. I said, oh, okay. So we're going to do foot washing on Friday. Uh, and so that's how we're going to do it. Uh, is on, Friday is good Friday anyway. And so come by the service. Uh, you can come and, and be a part of that. We'll be in the cafe, and so you'll want to come and, and use the front parking lot uh, where the mailboxes are coming that way uh, to do that. On Sunday is our resurrection service, and we're so excited about that, so excited about that. Um, you guys, can, can you put up the flyer for us, please? Uh, on Sunday, uh, we have it's City of God and Grace uh, Christian Church will be coming together on next Sunday uh, and where the entire service is uh, a collaborative effort. And so we'll be both churches working together to do this. And so we're real excited to have them uh, be a part of the service that Sunday. On next Sunday is uh, we're giving our first fruit offering to the Lord. Uh, it's also uh, Communion Sunday. Communion Sunday as well. We will serve communion during the, the service. There's a whole lot of things. The choir is going to be singing. The youth is going to be singing. It's just a, a number of things. Come early. They got, they've got got um, some continental breakfasts for you and then the photo booth and all the stuff afterwards. Uh, but we want to pray right now. Uh, those who are going to be joining us in, in uh, this time of fasting, I'm going to ask you to stand. And um, what we're going to do, we're going we're to offer the prayer. And then we're going to anoint you with oil. That's how we're going to do that. Um, so when we, uh, as soon as the prayer is finished, I said, right, let's just go ahead and do this because it'll make it easier. Just go ahead and start making your way to the center aisle. That'll be easier to do. Start making your way to the center aisle. You guys can join them as well. Uh, can make your way to the center aisle. And those who are going to be joining them in the consecration this, this starting tomorrow throughout this week. Come to the center aisle. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Those who are watching online, you can just put your, your name in the comment section so they just signify that you're joining us during this consecration. The anointing of God will rest upon you as well. Let's pray, Father, in the wonderful name, Jesus. Uh, 
this sacred week, Holy Week, is often called Passion Week, it's often referred to. This week entailed a lot of things that you did for us, from your coming into Jerusalem on the donkey and, and they with their palm branches, to you uh, coming and speaking uh, at the temple, to them coming and, and the, the alabaster box being broken, oil on your head and on your feet, to the Last Supper meal that you also instituted the communion, to you talking to the disciples and showing who would betray you. Judas went out to do that. Uh, to you talking with them, leaving there, walking through the, the vineyard to go pray to you praying to the wee hours of the night and your, your sweat turns into great drops of blood as you're hemorrhaging while you prayed, you prayed so intensely, to you being arrested and then a bogus trial, to them scourging you, to, to false witnesses speaking out against you, to a crowd, a mob of people declaring crucify, to you being beaten all through the night to you carrying a cross up a hill, to you being buried in a grave, and then people going on about their lives, with three whole days and nights pass. Oh, there was another morning they didn't know about. And that's when you rose from the dead. Father, this week, we're choosing to set aside. It's, it's a small price to pay, if, it, if we can even say that for us to fast and to pray this week. It's a small thing to do for us to refocus and recenter our minds upon you this week. Small thing. But I pray, God, that each one who does, that they'll find the joy of fasting, but more importantly, God, that they'll find you. That through this fast, may this week of consecration be completely different than any other. May they encounter the God of salvation, and may they fall in love with you this entire week. I got I pray for every person, those who have medical issues, and they're fasting by faith. Those who will be working, those who will be at school, those who want to fast, but because of medical reasons they cannot. Father, I, I pray for everybody today that, at, that as we go through this week, we'll be mindful of you and that you will receive, God, the effort that we put forward. I give you thanks. Keep everybody well. May no one be sick. May no one fall ill. Keep them from the hand of the devil, as I know you will. May they find peace, ultimate peace throughout this week. And I thank you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to come down and just anoint you with oil in Jesus' name, and you can go back to your seat. Uh, once you're there, just hold it for one moment, and then we're going to dismiss all together.
Stand. We're going home. Uh, don't forget on your on your way out. We do have uh, the resurrection cards. So please stop by. Grab some on, on your way out so you can pass about to your neighbor, uh, neighbors and their also friends, and, and bring someone with you on uh, this week. Uh, now, as we as we go through fasting, just some some things that kind of help you as you go through times of fasting. You want to try to avoid any kind of you know unnecessary confrontation, so to, you know, just protect yourself with that. Um, the Bible tells us that we don't go around boasting about the fasting because, of course, it kind of acts to fast. It also says don't walk around with, with a sad face, right? Uh, so, so someone that says to you, well, what's wrong? Well, I'm fasting. It says have a joyful countenance, joyful countenance. Uh, Isaiah 58 tells us that when we go through fasting, that what we do is also to enact the benefits of the Lord, whatever you would use for food during that, that meal that you're missing, take it and be a blessing uh, to someone, be a blessing to someone. So find someone that you can uh, bless this week uh, with whatever you would have used for yourself. 
uh, use it on, on someone else, and you'll see the Lord bless uh, your life. Father, thank you for this moment. We are grateful for today and the souls that were baptized in the wonderful name Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this week that that's, uh, is unfolding. Uh, we're going to go through it with joy uh, and with, with great happiness. And Lord, we come on, on Friday uh, for foot washing. We will humble ourselves and wash one another's feet. And then when we come on, on Sunday, we're going to celebrate, magnify your great and your marvelous name, knowing that we are approved and accepted by you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to sun upon you. And the Lord lift his countenance and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't that an amazing service from the praise and worship to the word of God? Now, you don't want to miss it on these same platforms next Sunday for our Sunday celebration at 10 a.m. It's Resurrection Sunday. So bring people on out. Invite so many people, as, invite as many people as you can if they don't have a church home. Bring them on out. And this week is our week of consecration. So we have services every day at 12 noon and at 7 p.m. And we're fasting every day from midnight until 4 p.m. You do not want to miss it. We hope to see you on these same platforms once again next week. And don't forget to get here early next week for our Continental breakfast. Have a blessed rest of your week. Bye.